I made a discovery yesterday. Somebody tweeted at me. They tweeted a picture of this book called President Donald J. Trump, The Son of Man, The Christ. So I, I, I bought the book. This is passed out at Trump rallies, FYI. To understand what their argument is, first we have to talk about who the Son of Man is. Let me lay the argument out. It, here's where it starts. Let's just start from the beginning. This is Shane Vaughn. He's a televangelist, and he is one of the leaders of the Trump cult, the new Trump religion that exists. This is an entirely new religion we're dealing with now. Listen to him explain part of the theology of this new religion. And he wrote down, wow. we are going, he wrote a course, to new Israel. Talking about the founding fathers. New Israel. New Israel, and when they came off the ship, they didn't plant an American flag. They planted the Christian flag mm -hmm. on the soil. They dedicated, George Washington knelt and prayed, dedicated America where the twin towers stand or stood. That's where America came into covenant with Yahweh, with God, was where the twin towers stand. Wow. Now, of course, none of that's true, but it is fundamental to their theology. They have to believe that this is true. They have to. This is part of the theology, okay? There's a brand new religion. And when I say religion, I don't mean denomination. I'll leave this up to you. You decide if this is a denomination or not. These people believe that Donald Trump is the new Messiah. I'm going to talk about exactly what that means, but is Christianity a denomination of Judaism? Is Islam a denomination of Judaism? I would argue that they are their own brand new religions, and in the same way, I would argue that this is also a brand new religion, not a denomination, but a new religion. This Shane Vaughn video goes a little bit further. Keep listening. He's going to make an argument for an empirical fact that is not true. Listen to this. That's where it happened. That's where he dedicated our nation in covenant to God. If you will make us a great nation, deliver us from tyranny, then we will serve you. And he gave the nation to God at that point. Every signer that of the Declaration of Independence were descendants of the tribes of Israel. Israel. We can trace it. We know it. None of it's true. Nothing that they're saying here is true. But it, it is all foundational to their belief system. They need these things to be true to arrive at their conclusion that Trump is the new messiah. Let me play a couple more clips for you. I have an outline here that I wrote late last night. I looked into this argument that Trump is the son of man. That's a foundational belief of this new religion, that Trump is the son of man. What is the son of man? We've all probably heard that saying at some point in our young lives, going to church or whatever. You know, Jesus being the son of man, that's the claim generally. What is the son of man? There is a historian, a biblical historian named Bart Ehrman. He knows what he's talking about. He was like a, a hardcore Christian, and he went to college in a Ph.D. program to prove that the Bible is the inerrant word of God. And by the time he got to the end of it, he realized that it's not. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. He knows what he's talking about. He's really, really intelligent and well-informed. And he wrote a post on his airmanblog.org thing about Jesus and what the Son of Man is, okay? So let's just read a little bit of it to give you an idea of what the Son of Man is and why these people would call Donald Trump the Son of Man and why it would matter. Question. In Mark 8, 27 to 28, Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? Mark, by the by, was the first gospel written. It is like the original source for some of the other gospels, including Matthew. So it was the very first one. Jesus says, who do people say that I am? And they reply that different people think he's John the Baptist, Elijah, or one of the prophets. Jesus then follows up with the key question, but who do you say that I am? And Peter replies, you are the Christ. So Christ is another word for Messiah, right? And Messiah is somebody who's going to fulfill a covenant between Yahweh and th the nation, basically. Yeah, a Messiah is somebody who brings Yahweh and the country together. So when you say when you hear the word Christ or Messiah, that's what it's about. But son of man has its own different distinct meaning we'll get to in a second. When Luke tells a story, Luke keeps the verbal back and forth almost the same. Although when Peter replies, he is a bit more specific. 
the Christ of God. Was there another kind of Christ? Matthew's version is a bit different, though. Jesus asks, who do people say the Son of Man is? Okay, that's different from who do people say that I am. Matthew was written after Mark was written, and Matthew used Mark as a source. We'll get to the origins of the term Son of Man in a second. Just keep reading. The disciples reply in much the same way, although in addition to John the Baptist and Elijah, they also say that some people think he's Jeremiah. And Jesus replies again, but who do you say that I am? And Peter replies, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Matthew adds more at that point. So is Matthew having Jesus ask two different questions? Who is the Son of Man and who am I? Or is Matthew trying to have Jesus refer to himself in this passage as the Son of Man? In fact, is Matthew equating Jesus, the Son of Man, and the Son of God as all the same person in this passage? Or is he differentiating between Jesus and the Son of Man? He obviously tweaked a passage for some purpose. Like I said, Matthew was written after Mark and used Mark as a source. So Matthew rephrases it to make Jesus look like the Son of Man. Though originally, when the conversation took place, there's no reason to think that Jesus believed that he was the Son of Man. There's some debate in the Christian community. Not a whole lot of debate. It's mostly philosophical more than theological. Okay, so this is, this is Bart Ehrman's response. In my previous posts, I've laid out the views I have about Jesus and the Son of Man and some of the reasons I have them. It turns out to be a terrifically complicated matter. There are entire books devoted just to this one issue. What, what was Jesus' view of the Son of Man? Written by scholars with different understandings. The view I reached toward the end of my PhD work, it's one of the standard views that's been around since the end of the 19th century, was very, very different from the one I had before, but it's the view I still have, though I understand it much more fully now. To wit, here are the points about the Son of Man, okay? Jesus did use the term Son of Man as a central part of his message. In doing so, he's referring to a cosmic judge of the earth who would come at the end of history to bring a cataclysmic end to the world as we know it, to destroy all the evil forces in the world that are opposed to God and that are, and that are making life miserable for his people. So most religions theologically believe that Jesus is the Son of Man and the Son of God. They're two different entities. The Son of Man is mentioned in the Old Testament. I think the book of Jeremiah and the book of Ezekiel and Daniel, maybe. I don't remember which ones exactly. When Jesus came to earth, he implied that he's the Son of God and the Son of Man. The Son of Man in the Old Testament has a specific role to play in prophecy. The Son of Man is expected to come to earth right before Armageddon and take control of Israel and spark Armageddon as the leader. So most Christians believe that Jesus is coming back, right? When Jesus comes back, he will be coming in the role of Son of Man. He's already fulfilled the role of Son of God and Savior. When he comes to earth again, he will be son of man. Here's where Trump comes into this. They believe Trump is the son of man. They believe that Jesus fulfilled his role as son of God, Messiah number one. They think that America is in a new covenant with Yahweh, new Israel. And Trump is the Messiah of new Israel, the son of man. The reason... That, that the Trump cult believes Jesus can't be the son of man is because he never led the nation of Israel. That is a precondition for being the son of man. You have to be the, the, the leader of the nation. Trump was the leader of the nation. So here's how the theology goes. Brand new religion, okay? Jesus comes to earth, fulfills his role as son of God and savior to mankind. He dies, he goes to heaven. The Founding Fathers come to America, dedicate it to Yahweh, and enter into a new covenant with him. Trump comes along, becomes the leader of New Israel, or America, and by doing so, becomes the Son of Man, the new Messiah, the Christ. That is the theology packaged into one. It is a brand new religion that exists. They even have their own Bible. They call it the Patriot Bible that has the New Testament and the founding documents, Declaration of Independence, Constitution, all that other stuff. 
That's where you get images like this. People believe that he is divine. No joke. These people think that Joe Biden has a role to play in prophecy, too. I'm talking the new Trump religion people, okay? Like, for example, Robin Bullock. Listen to what Robin Bullock here has to say. This is a televangelist, if you're unfamiliar. Listen to what he has to say about Trump, Obama, and Biden, and how they all factor into this new religion. And when they raided Mar-a-Lago, God didn't like that, Steve. When uh, the FBI searched Mar-a-Lago for classified documents, what he's talking about. I think this happened sometime around August 8th, 2022 or something. The FBI searched Mar-a-Lago for classified documents. That didn't set well in heaven. It didn't set well at all when they did that. You know, the scripture says, touch my, not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Well, they touched his anointing when they did that, his anointed, because uh, Trump is David. He's David. He began to be David when uh, uh, when all of this, when Barack Obama's seal fell off of his podium. He began to take. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. It fell off and rolled away or something. It sure did. It sure did. And uh, see, Obama would love to be the Antichrist. He would love to be the anointed one because uh, they named him that. Remember? Yeah, but he he's not and this will be he, he's not he can't be now because he is now Gog in the spirit. He became Gog. So they believe that Obama and Biden and Trump have very influential, significant roles to play in Bible prophecy. They think that Trump is the new Messiah. A minute ago, we watched a, a clip of Shane Vaughn explaining how he believed that America was in a new covenant with Yahweh and is effectively the new Israel, right? Listen to him describe Donald Trump's connection to all of this. What is the prophetic seal that Yahweh placed upon Donald Trump and upon his, his true people? It is supernatural prosperity and blessings. That's the prophetic seal. The ring of God, when he touches your life, there will be unparalleled blessings that will come into your life that you didn't ask for, you didn't create, you're just anointed for that season, and the evidence of it is on the prosperity of the nation and the people. Let me just break that down. He believes that America is anointed by God and is in a new covenant with Yahweh because of the prosperity of the nation. That's his evidence for it. Donald Trump carries the prophetic seal of the calling of God. He is Joseph. If you are anointed by Yahweh, for a specific plan and purpose, you are a Messiah. That's pretty on the nose. Doesn't get much more on the nose than that, right? He called Donald Trump a Messiah just now. This guy is a televangelist. He's not a nobody, okay? He has a massive following. Yeshua was the Messiah of mankind. But Donald Trump is the Messiah of America. There you go. It doesn't get much clearer than that, right? I have more examples, if you can believe it. Here's where it. Here's where the plot thickens, okay? They believe that Biden reversed prophecy, stopped Trump from becoming president intentionally. By doing that, it would delay Armageddon. Trump has to be the political leader of the country, or let me rephrase, the son of man has to be the political leader of New Israel for Armageddon to be sparked. The claim is that the Son of Man will come along, become the political leader, and then spark Armageddon. And they believe that Trump was supposed to receive two terms and then spark Armageddon. But Biden won, and they claimed that Trump was going to get a second term. They believed he was going to spark Armageddon in his second term. So when Biden takes the presidency, in their minds, there's no way that he could have successfully taken the presidency because Trump is the son of man. He's the Christ. He's the prophet. He is the Messiah. He's supposed to spark Armageddon in their, in their minds. So Robin Bullock comes along and tells Donald Trump, he's addressing Trump directly. I don't know if Trump's watching this or not, but 
he's addressing Trump directly and telling him, you need to walk into the White House and take control. The stage is set. Everything is set. But you're going to have to pray for the rightful president, whether he wants to walk back into this or not. Is it his will? Yes. Is he the president? Yes. That's why he could just walk right back in. And God will supernaturally move things out of the way. God will supernaturally push things out of the way if you just walk in and take control because you are supposed to be there. Listen to what he says here. Don't be concerned about riots. Riots are going to happen whether you come back or not. They're going to happen whether uh, Donald Trump runs for president or is president or walks in the office. The riots are going to happen anyway. Don't worry about all of that. Operate in the power of God and let him pave your way. One step toward that your position and God will open the way all the way back. So this is him saying, walk into the White House and take control. One step in that direction and God will push things out of the way supernaturally. You just have to walk in and put on the mantle of the Son of Man anointing. And I'm going to tell the president something. Donald John Trump. You were anointed from the day you were born to be president. And you were brought on the scene for such a time as this. They believe him to be the son of man. They believe him to be the Messiah. Seriously, this is a new religion. Like Christianity is a denomination of Judaism. Or Islam is a denomination of Judaism. This is a new offshoot, a new branch of Christianity and Judaism. That's why we heard people saying things like this. This is Roger Stone repeating some of the talking points that he's heard from the evangelical leaders. Listen to this. We have two parties in this country, the patriots and the traitors. This is not about Republican and Democrat anymore. This is a struggle between dark and light between good and evil, between the godly and the godless, and we dare not fail or we step off into a thousand years of darkness. That's the point right there. That's the point. This is a, a, a battle between good and evil, dark and light. This is a battle between Satan and God in their minds. Donald Trump is a new messiah, and Joe Biden is supposed to be Gog or the Antichrist, or Satan himself. I don't know. I'm not sure what they think he is, but he is reversing prophecy. They believe Biden is setting out to reverse prophecy. Here's another example. Robin Bullock, again, dude is a televangelist and a part of the Trump religion, the new Trump religion. And the Lord told me, he said, now the fight has left the heavens and it's in the earth. Now we are in a full-on spiritual war on the 6th, it was still in the heavens, but... January 6th, it was in the heavens, but after the 6th, it manifested itself on earth, this spiritual war. After that day, it dropped into the earth. What we would call an administration is not one at all. There is no administration right this moment in the White House. Now, I'm just telling you straight up, there's not one there. Now you say, well, what are you talking about, Brother Robin? That sounds crazy. Well, I'm about to explain myself. I didn't know I was going to be talking about all this today until the Lord said I was. There's not an administration in the White House or in the Capitol. When the war left the heavens and came to the ground, this so-called administration is actually a regime whose sole purpose is to stop a prophecy from coming to pass. And why did Biden set out to stop a prophecy from coming to pass? Because that prophecy was Armageddon taking place. They believe that Biden stopped Armageddon from happening because Trump would have delivered his people to heaven and saved the world and all of this other stuff because he is a new Messiah, Trump is, in their mind. That's what it is. People say, well, you can't see that, that, uh, that this man is the president now. No, this man is not the president. 
He's sitting in the seat, but that's not who he is. And now this whole, what we, what men are calling an administration is to do nothing. Its sole purpose is to keep the prophecy that the prophets gave that the rightful president would be in office again. And this whole thing is to keep that from happening. Because if he doesn't stop Trump from being in office, the Son of Man, the Messiah, then he will deliver God's people to heaven. That's what Biden is trying to prevent in their minds. He's trying to prevent Trump from delivering God's people to heaven. I mean, people have even stopped identifying as Baptist and started identifying as non-denominational, Greg Locke specifically, because they're not, they're not Baptist anymore. They have a new belief that Donald Trump is a new Messiah. You can't be Baptist and believe that simultaneously. They have a new Bible, the Patriot Bible, that has the New Testament and the founding documents like uh, of America, the Constitution and all the other stuff. Is this a new denomination or is it a new religion? You tell me in the comments or on Twitter at Telltale Atheist. Is this an offshoot? of Judaism the same way Christianity is? Or is it an offshoot of Christianity the same way Baptist or Methodist is? In my opinion, I think this is a brand new religion. Let me know what you think.